much of his working life, this has been Brian Ralston's office. As a salesman, he spends a lot of time on the road, putting in long hours, living and eating on the run. And I'll get up in the morning, I'll load up, and I'll be gone sometimes for the whole day, sometimes till late in the evening. At that time, I was smoking about a pack and a half a day, sometimes up to two packs. And I'm doing a lot of sitting, I'm driving all day. I'm in my car, I live there, so there's, there's a lot of physical work, but there isn't that much physical exercise. I wasn't doing a lot of walking. If Brian Ralston has any health concerns at all, it's about the risk of lung cancer. The last thing on his mind as he drives down the highway on January 29, 1998, is the health of his heart. I got past Hamilton, and I decided to have another smoke. And as soon as I lit that cigarette, it was boom. It was bang. And then it was pain. Not heavy pain, but pain. And I said to myself, it's a heart attack. And I thought, well, this thing isn't going away, and it was steadily getting a little bit worse. Any other time, he would have likely been pulled over, but not this particular day. Brian has no other choice but to keep driving. It's a race against time. There's a stop light, and I stopped, and I was just going to make my turn, and there's an ambulance coming. <laughs> and he kept going. I turned followed right behind him, got in, followed in his tracks, and, and I was right in his jet stream. <laughs> and I followed him all the way from, from there to St. Joseph's Hospital. And they kept asking me how the pain was. Like it got worse, and it was getting worse, and it was getting worse. Finally, it was so bad, they said, what, what would it be in a scale of 1 to 10, your pain? I said, oh, about 14. Brian is lucky that he doesn't die. He's in emergency for two days before being transferred to the cardiac unit where he spends eight more. His blood pressure is dangerously high, 180 over 110. He's prescribed nitroglycerin, aspirin, and painkillers, which have their own share of side effects, nausea, headaches, and constipation. This is not the first time Brian Ralston has been laid low by health problems. An accident eight years earlier leaves him with chronic back pain, so much so, from time to time, he has difficulty walking. When relief comes, it's surprisingly close to home. He was my neighbor, and I saw him on the hallway have difficulty to walk, especially his, his back. It his looks very stiff. He can stretch his back. I was going over, she said, she knew right away. She said, what's wrong? And I said, oh, I said, once in every three, two or three months, I get this and I can't straighten my back out. It's awful. And she said, well, let me come in here. I'll fix it for you. So I said, you will. She said, I said, wait, what do you, what, what? She said, well, I mean, I can puncture it. I was uh, trained in China, actually, in both uh, Western medicine and uh, Chinese medicine. When I gr graduated, uh, I was the first uh, female PhD in acupuncture and Chinese medicine field. Brian has never heard of acupuncture, but decides he has nothing to lose, except perhaps the pain. She stuck her finger right in the back of my leg, and I said, what are you doing this for? It's my back, it's hurting. We use the acupuncture also in motion. So when I like uh, putting acupuncture needle on the, his uh, points, uh, which is behind his uh, knee, and I asked him to move, and he was uh, kind of uh, scared. But I tell him, don't worry, just uh, keep walking. I took about five steps, and it was like an electric shock. Came right through from the tip of my toes right up to the top of my head. And it was like, whoa, it was gone. It was amazing. One needle, one time. I had never had back pain since. As far as Brian Ralston is concerned, acupuncture has worked wonders. But can it do the same for his heart? Once again, Brian decides he has nothing to lose. I said, I, what do you think I should do? I said, yeah, should I get a heart specialist? She says, yeah. I said, well, you're, yeah, but you're an acupuncturist. Why don't I just deal with you? She says, no, no. She says, this is serious. you got a heart attack here. And I tell, tell him, you know, he probably still need the medication for a while. And then we use the different herbal medicine or acupuncture treatment to help the, uh, build up the body's energy. Dr. Wang prescribes various Chinese herbs in conjunction with acupuncture treatments, Dan Sang to clear heart congestion, and Tian Chi to help improve Brian's circulation and lower his cholesterol. She also suggests high daily doses of vitamin C and E, but her most important prescription isn't as easy as taking a pill. He's like a kind of a hyper person and he need to deal with his uh, stress and also his uh, diet because uh, he loves the coffee and loves the cheese 
and which is not good for his uh, cholesterol and his uh, blood pressure. So he got uh, um, like a more vegetarian diet. And also the most important thing is uh, got to quit uh, smoke. Otherwise, I tell him, even with the Chinese medicine treatment, uh, acupuncture, if you don't change the lifestyle, change the way you know, you're thinking, and um, probably problems still will, be, will occur. While Brian was definitely regaining his strength, Dr. Wang urged him to see a heart specialist who put Brian through a battery of tests, including an angiogram to trace his blood flow. Results showed that Brian had severe arterial sclerosis, that 85 to 90 percent of his heart was blocked. Concerned that his patient is a prime target for another attack, the heart specialist recommends angioplasty, a type of heart surgery that involves opening significantly blocked arteries from the inside, avoiding the need for more extensive surgery. Like any procedure, it's not without risk. I was talking to Yuha. I said, is there anything you can do to, to get rid of the blocked arteries? She says, yeah. I said, well, good, then why don't you do it? Why do you got to go through all this? She says, it may take you six months, it may take you a year, it may take you two years. She says, you don't block, unblock an artery in one second. Brian continues his treatments with Dr. Wang. In June, Brian checks into the hospital for his scheduled angioplasty and is put through another series of tests before the actual surgery. Before beginning the procedure, the surgeon leaves to look at Brian's test results. He went away and came back with three other doctors. And they, he said, I'm going to, he talked to them, and he comes back to me. He said, okay, Mr. Olson. He says, when did you have your heart attack? I said, January the 29th. I said, what's wrong? They said, well, nothing's wrong, sir, actually. He said, uh, there's nothing there to do an uh, angioplasty on. I was quite surprised because uh, it's such a short time, and he get uh, completely recovered. Brian's been back to work ever since, but although he's still on the road, He's no longer on the run. And I am very much totally getting so recovered that I'm actually in better shape now than I was even six months before I had this heart attack. Ten times better shape. And um, not only that, but I'm eating better. I don't smoke, of course. My lungs feel like 100%. I'm getting oxygen again. With Ch Chinese medicine, we say we not to treat your physical body. Also, we treat uh, from the mind and the spirit, so the person can be completely changed. And I'm still staying with the herbs because I now I, I realize that it's it's more than a tonic. It it it's like it's like oil. It's like getting an oil change in your car. You've got to do it if you want to keep the motor going.